G'day guys, well apologies this week for uh, a late video, it's actually Tuesday afternoon now and my alarm just went off to uh, put a video up on YouTube for you guys, but Yelena and I went fishing this morning, beautiful location, filmed some scenic stuff, bit of land base, she was up at 1am and we didn't catch any fish so we bailed on it at about 8 o'clock so that I could get to the lake and shoot some stuff this afternoon before 5 but unfortunately I had a heap of uh, boat things that were out seeing I didn't realise that I still had to do and uh, we're on the water now at quarter past five so this video is going up on a Wednesday for you guys so apologies but before we get started what I want to do this week is something I do often is giveaways on my channel but normally I do a post and direct you to my videos to then comment on certain videos but what I'm going to do this week is so for the next week, so the video is going up on a Wednesday, from till next Wednesday I'll do the draw. So randomly, any comments, doesn't matter how short, how long, any comments on this video, I will choose one of those comments next Wednesday and give you guys this prize pack. So there's heaps of stuff. There's the assist strings that I use, I'll go into that in a bit. There's new SS shads from Molex. There's a Shad 140 in my color, which you can't get anywhere at the moment. More SS shads. Some ventral rings that I use, some RT shards, and a Molex extra large jersey. All that stuff will be in a prize pack for you guys. So, anyone that's in the comments below in the next week goes in for a chance to win some of this stuff. So, let's get into the video. Oh my god! Oh my god! The reason I'm here, we just finished fishing the ABT uh, Barramundi Open on Lake Awonga. So this is a part of my Barramundi Basics series of videos, but I guess it's not its not so much a basics video, more so a, a little bit sort of semi-advanced, I guess, but um, things that I take for granted to help me catch more fish, I want to highlight some of them in this video to help you guys catch barramundi uh, particularly this time of year when the fishing is tough or just if the fishing is tough some of these tips might help you to catch more fish so so two main lures i was running for the tournament and the one main lure for me so ghost bass molly shad 140 double rings at the front and i up the treble to a 10 single ring on the rear and a size one the hooks are dt 58s from van fook on the toe point, rather than a clip or a loop knot, I run a solid ring to a split ring. So I like to run a uni knot, which is basically fail proof, I can tie it in a hurry, everything like that, to that solid ring. Then I basically have no point anywhere in this setup that is a weak spot. So my uni knot is strong, FG knot is strong, everything is strong. That's the reason for running that solid ring to split ring combo. And also if I want to change my lures out, I'm just split ringing them off and I just say so just undo the split ring to take the lure off use a split ring to put the new lure back on pretty simple I'll go into the technique on how I was fishing the ghost bass shortly second lure that was working well is a 7 inch RT shad so that's rigged on a half ounce TT80 and I've set it up with a split ring swivel split ring and then I've got like a little keeper that pushes back into the body of the plastic and the treble sits a little bit further back. I found that when I was running straight off there with a 1.0, every now and then that treble was sitting over the head of the plastic. And if you had a bite when that in that scenario, you obviously wouldn't catch the fish or you risk just like pinning the fish and dropping it. So I didn't want that to happen. Hence adding the swivel and two split rings, pushing that treble back to there. And it doesn't hang, it doesn't fail up. So the split rings I'm running are a size five Van Fook. The solid rings I'm talking about are an assist ring in size M. So the reel I'm running is the Akuma Komodo 364, my standard big swim bait reel. I'm running that big single power handle again and I'll explain more about that why. So the main key differences I did with my rod reel combination this tournament was I beefed up my rods. So instead of running a 796 which I find is very forgiving for fighting barramundi and, uh, and for yourself, I upped it to an 806. So the reason for that 
was for popping out of that weed, which I'll explain in a second. So my RT Shad combo was a little bit different as well. I ran an 836 rod, which is 8 foot 3 and a power level 6, so it's the, bull, the Dobbins bull shad. So it's a beast of a rod, and the main reason I did that was because I wanted to make sure that that big single hook on this jig head setup was going to be pinned if, if that's what they hit me on. So we're fishing a bit of a combination of techniques, so Corey was fishing a little bit different to me, and I was sort of fishing, uh, I guess, what I thought I was comfortable with. So what the plan was, was to fish the gaps and pockets in the weed beds. So how we're fishing was sort of, uh, I guess, a compromise between Corey and I. Corey likes to fish a lot of deeper fish and fish that he can see on live sonar, and I'm not used to fishing live sonar, so I'm used to sort of feeling what I'm fishing. So we ended up sitting on a deep point with the riverbed and stuff beside us, which allowed the deep sonar, I mean, which allowed on the live sonar to see the fish that were cruising past in the deep and the fish in the open water. And what I was doing was picking a gap in the weed pockets off this point. So um, we could semi see on the live sonar as well, a gap between those two pockets. And that's exactly what I was trying to hit. So the reason for the beefier rod was so when I got out there, how I was getting my hits rather than my conventional just pop it over the weed like that, I really had to hit the rod hard to break off that weed. And all my hits came when I was breaking off weed, like proper stuck. And it was a bit of a, I guess it, there was a fine line between getting enough weed to be able to rip it off and getting completely bogged. And when you're completely bogged, you just couldn't get it out at all. And essentially you waste that cast. But there was a lot of casts, a lot of casting for obviously not a lot of bites. But what we were looking for, what we were looking for essentially is the fish sitting in those pockets and then I was going through at a similar level to those fish and ripping it out of that weed straight in front of them and popping it into their face and the hit was very like very intense you'd be ripping the weed off like that and then the fish would be taken off the other way as if as if you almost hit them with it that's how quick they're onto it so the reason for the big powerful rod is when you get buried in the weed like that a downward strike and that breaks free of the weed. So I'm literally clear of all that weed now. And that's when all my hits were coming. When you're in that weed and you really had to get stuck in a little bit harder weed than you normally would to get deeper in where they were. You couldn't just get away with your typical crank of the handle. You had to snap that rod down hard, break through that thicker weed and the fish were just snatching it in between the gaps. I know I had weed on my lure at the time when they ate it but it didn't seem to worry them they were just that lure ripping through the weed in front of them they wouldn't notice that there was any weed hanging off the lure at all could have fished weedless in that scenario to be able to get into their zone but at the same time fishing weedless i don't think would have drew that reaction from the fish to get the bite like ripping this through was and the hookup rate on this with a with a 1 0 and a 1 is much better than than running a weedless combination in saying that i still missed two bites so i still had two really hard hits that didn't stick sort of semi wasn't paying attention because they smacked it and didn't run whereas the other ones smacked it and took off so they weren't eating it it was pinned to them either on their nose on their cheek or on top of their head if you weren't in the weed, you weren't in the game. Simple as that. So the second pattern combination that worked was that 7 inch RT shad on a half inch jig head. So in the pre-fish as well, watching them on live sonar, we're in deeper water. The fish were sitting at that 2 to 3 in the top part of the water column. And what you would do with this big rod, sort of see where the fish were swimming along on the side, on the, on the live. You'd lead them with your cast, you didn't want to go over them or the line would upset them. Lead them with your cast and then it's a pretty quick pace back past those active fish and they would, on this RT shad, almost all of them would turn and look 
but obviously not all commit. In the pre-fish, we didn't have to fish that much. You'd pull up on a set of fish, you'd find one, cast this out, bang one, and then we would move because there's no point, no point stinging fish. But once the boat pressure and everything got on and whatever else changed, they got a bit fussy, but it still did work. And the reason for the big rod was make sure even if it was at a short distance that I didn't have to do much to set a hook because this is this is a bulldog for rod. It's eight foot three and power level six and it doesn't take much to set the hook. Also I left big power handles on both my reels even though I wanted a bit more pace I normally use the big single to slow me down but I didn't want to slip off and when I'm hitting that weed hard with my other technique same deal if a fish hit me I didn't want to slip off that big power handle and when you're popping out a weed you can literally lock that behind your hand and it's not coming off you're not going to slip you're not going to get buried in the weed and you're not going to miss that fish so braid and leader for the combo was the standard what i run all the time 50 pound sunline and 60 pound of the fc 100. i've only been chewed off once ever with that fc 100 in the 60 and it was a big fish and i was going a little bit heavy handed but I find I can get away with 60 fine, rips through the weed a lot better, and that 50 pound sunline braid is very, um, I guess, rough on the outer edges, and it will cut through that weed pretty good too, rather than a soft sort of supple line or a, or a thicker line too, which won't get, which won't cut that weed when that fish tries to bury it. One last little tip that we did, whether it made any difference or not, was that I dipped the tails on the ghost bass just because the fishing was relatively tough so you do anything at the time to uh, try and catch more fish so that's about it for the tournament update we finished second very tough event the last session we jumped the fish off and I missed one bite and I'm sure nearly everyone in the top 10 even probably lower guys than that have some sort of story of missed fish missed opportunities fish that jumped off all that so we can't complain about that very happy with second from such a tough event and um, the quality of fish in here is incredible. Those fish do not give up. We had some amazing fights. Corey was down on one side of the boat with the fish jumping on the other side of the boat and uh, very hectic, but very fun. So thanks as always for tuning in. Don't forget, if you want to get into this giveaway with all this stuff that I use in this tournament and the apparel, then drop a comment below and I'll draw that on next Wednesday. But appreciate you all tuning in. Sorry this video is a day late. Won't happen again. I'll see you all in the next one.